All right, you ready, Sweet Tea? I'm always ready. I got a new one for you, man. Sweet Tea Spidey, Sweet Spidey. Sweet Spidey. You're an Avenger, man, yeah. you're an Avenger. Peter Parker, okay. My man. I can get down with it. Today, we're going over the top reasons that relationships fail. So we're talking about personal relationships, romantic relationships, and professional relationships, why they fail. So this is one of the videos that is not covered by my board certified behavior analyst credentials. So the content's not all evidence-based. It's my experience and me going through a lot of bad relationships through work, through personal, through a romantic. So I'm just trying to share what I have and provide some behavioral karma. Behavioral karma. I wanna remind you guys why we do these popular videos that are not all evidence-based. It's because we wanna grab your attention and then slowly move you into an area of applied behavior analysis that really interests you. We wanna grab your attention and then direct you to the clinical channel or an area of your interest. And in addition to just grabbing your attention, we're trying to make sure like BF Skinner wanted before to extrapolate. We're trying to make sure that we can make the science available to many different areas outside of education and just human services. Reason number one, relationships fail. In your relationship, you want to be right as opposed to solve a problem. So just wanting to be right about what you suggested or what you said in an argument or some sort of conflict, being right should not supersede solving the problem because what happens is people tend to dig in their heels when they say something, they wanna be right and they argue back and forth. So I call that going through tactical hell. It's a circular thing that goes round and round. And I have two behavior hacks on this. One, just walk away because you can disengage from that. Even if you have a hard time trying to prove you're right and you don't wanna just solve the problem, walk away, step back to the problem later and work with the person on moving forward and solving it. Second thing when it comes to this, Instead of having to be right and having to make something your idea, genuinely allow them to feel like a certain thing is their idea. Because what I've noticed over the years is that things go so much better if someone has an idea and you help guide them along and you know it's the right thing and you just allow them to feel it's their idea. That's an interesting hack, but it works. Number two reason why relationships fail. Two people think that conflict is bad but conflict is not bad. Problems that you come across and the way you respond to those together can really, really strengthen a relationship. So any kind of discord and conflict, the way you respond and how you come through that conflict together can make or break a relationship. I like to say leverage conflict rather than being leveled by it. Number three, you start off a relationship but before going into it, you're not happy with yourself. So until you can have some relative happiness on your own and with your alone time, it's just not gonna go well, with, no matter how compatible you are with someone. You're gonna have to stand on your own. And my hack, my suggestion is, even if you don't like spending time alone, force yourself and orchestrate situations where you need to take a small trip, or you need to spend time alone, you force yourself to kind of get in your own head, listen to your own voice, and not let all the noise out there. Maybe you're meditating, maybe you're breathing, maybe you're just driving and listening to music, but require yourself to spend time alone, and then you'll start figuring out answers to things. And then, when you get into the relationship, you'll be super happy. Nothing outside of you is going to truly make you have long-term sustained happiness. It's gonna come from within, I can tell you that. Like that Jerry Maguire movie, don't think that somebody completes you. In some ways, people say, you know, distance makes the heart grow fonder. Sometimes, other times you're like, damn, I'm so glad I'm away from that person. Number four reason why relationships fail. Again, it could be romantic, personal, or professional. You lean on that one person way too much. It's really important that you can stand on your own, which kind of goes along with the previous one. I've heard the saying that if you lean on something too much, you will fall. One of the best things you can do with personal friendships and with work relationships is don't put all your eggs in one basket. So the hack is really to build strong relationships. Keep your circle small, but make sure that those are tight relationships. 
All right, this is random sweet tea, but I just want to throw this in there. My good buddy, Dr. Rick Kubina, is doing a workshop on September 12th and 13th, 2019 through Central Reach in the Philadelphia area. You might want to check it out. He's a great speaker and adds a lot of value. Number five, this goes along with all three areas of relationships. A reason why it may fail is infidelity and dishonesty. Infidelity doesn't just mean, you know, cheating on the other person in a romantic relationship. It means being two-faced and being disingenuous and not a hunter. So in any relationship, you have to stick together. You have to have a sense of trust and loyalty. You need to know that the person has your back and you have their back. Not to anything unethical, but just that there's a sense of trust. You have to pretend you're in a foxhole together and you're in it together. So when it comes to business situations, I've found that people may have me sign a non-disclosure agreement or an NDA or some sort of paperwork or contract, but that's ridiculous most of the time. It's needed, but often ridiculous because that same attorney that drew it up, I'll have an attorney respond to that and it'll negate the whole thing. It'll be a moot point. What means most to me and to many people in a relationship, it's a handshake, it's look in the eyes, it's trust, and it's this. <laughs> number six reason why relationships fail. The number of negative interactions that you have with the other person begin to outweigh the number of positive interactions. So in the field of behavior analysis, there's a general rule of having a four to one ratio, four positive reinforcement interactions as opposed to every one challenge or undesirable situation. And sweet tea, my last one, people continually bring up the past. So at some point when you resolved an issue, you found a solution, the behavior hack is move forward. Don't keep rehashing the past because all it does is bring up those, that ratio is not gonna be a, a four to one ratio of positive to undesirable situations. Because what matters the most is long-term trends in a relationship. Historical problems do matter because it affects future interactions, however, what really matters is that you're trending in the right direction with your positive interactions with the person, whether it's romantic, personal, or professional. I don't know, what do you think, Sweet Tea? Just trying to offer value. I think if people knew some of this shit before getting into some relationships, it could save time. Save time, it's true. We're all flawed human beings. I mean, we come to the table with a history. Behaviorally, we come with baggage, the way our parents treated us, the way previous relationships went south. So we all come to the table with a lot of baggage. So it's a matter of just moving forward. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you don't mind hitting the subscribe button if you like it. Thank you so much.